Hallelujah. Nothing like God. Father, we thank you for anointing me today to deliver your word. I have a message from the throne room of God. I thank you, God, that that word shall be planted inside of your children and everyone that is here. I thank you, God, it shall grow up, it shall change the lives and change our nation. We thank you for it and praise you for it. And every believer said, amen, amen, amen. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, it says, this know also. And actually in the Greek, it means it's very imperative for you to know this. What is it that it's imperative that we know? This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. That means really dangerous times. It's a time of very demonic activity. Then it begins to list it. Well, we did a series on that at one time. And so we can realize that we're in the last days. Is that not right? Come on, be with me. We're in the last days. However, if we're not people that stay in the word and stay in prayer, we can become so focused to what the enemy's doing that we act like God is doing nothing. Well, I got news for you. That might be true what the enemy's doing, but God is on the move. I'm here to tell you there's enough in the Bible that tells us about that we serve a miracle-working God, and he is still on the throne. Hello, hallelujah. And so I've got to build up your expectancy because I got news for you. God's going to do something in your life. It's going to change your life if you'll grab a hold of this and put it in you. Change your life. Change your city. Come on now. And what I'm teaching is, is being said all over. There's one thing I know about God. When he's putting emphasis on truth in an area, it's never just one church's revelation. We're not the only ones that are going after God. So when God has a truth, you're going to find it's just everywhere. And I got news for you. God is telling everywhere and everybody he's on the move and get ready for a great outpouring. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 2, it says, and this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And we're talking about the day of Pentecost. Peter stands up and he said, what you're seeing, this demonstration, the power of God, it was already prophesied in the book of Joel. And he said, this is what it is. Well, I'm here to tell you that, in, that, that, was, that did happen on the day of Pentecost. It was a great outpouring of God. But I'm here to tell you, he's still outpouring the Holy Spirit. Come on now. I'm here to tell you that get ready for one of the greatest outpouring that has hit America. You ought to thank God that you live in America. Are you listening to me that God brought you here? You ought to thank God you're still alive. That means you're ready to be part of it. God's moving everywhere in all different nations, but I'm not in other nations. I'm here. I thank God for what he's doing in other nations, but I've learned about God, what he's doing elsewhere he can also do here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he says this, it shall come to pass, I'll pour out of my spirit. Didn't say always spirit, pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. If you've got sons and daughters that are not out there serving God, you ought to shout. Because that means there is revival going on, and God's after your son and after your daughter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I, I don't know if I, I said it this earlier service, but if you know my son over the years has really given me a, 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 a time of using my faith. That's a good way to put it. I wanted to say, God, change him or kill him. I'm being honest with you. I'm just telling you, but I'm here to tell you that God has delivered my son. He was so close to death. He was in intensive care. And Pastor Lisa said, Mom, I really think we need to go up and see him. It took her to encourage me to go. I'm being honest with you. So I walk in. You know how loving I am and gentle. So here he is. He's been in intensive care. His liver has quit working. Are you listening to me? So I walk in and I said, well, 
I guess you know why you're here, don't you? It's because you didn't show respect and honor to your mother. And the Bible says if you don't show honor and respect to your parents, your days are cut off. I said, so your days have been cut off. <laughs> Didn't I? I did. I said, what you need to do is ask me to forgive you. Ask God to forgive you. I said, then we'll pray, and God will heal you, and God will deliver you. Sometimes we need to be a straight shooter, and every now and then I have the anointing to be a straight shooter. He said, Mother, I'm so sorry for all that I said. I said, I forgive you. I said, now we'll ask God to forgive you, then we'll pray for your miracle. I'm here to tell you God healed my son. His liver is functioning. He's back at work, and he's totally and completely delivered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hold on to the promise of God. Don't ever give up on your son or your daughter. Oh, glory to God. But now here's the thing. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. That means my son's going to flow in the spirit. What about yours? What about your daughter? Come on now. That means great revival among you. Hallelujah. Woo! Great revival among you. Great revival among you. Listen, 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 listen. And your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. You know what I like about God? God doesn't care what age you are. He's going to use you. Oh, I like that. Oh, hallelujah. And all my servants and my handmaids, I'll pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I'll show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor and smoke. And he says, whoever go on, verse 20, the sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood, before that great and notable day of the Lord comes. And it shall come to pass that whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That means great revival. Doesn't mean everybody will be saved, but it means those that call. How many of you are praying and believing God? Come on, your family's going to be saved. I'm not teaching today, I'm preaching because I got a message from the throne room of God. You have been being taught because she's laid the principles down that God wanted laid. He said, now you go and tell them I've heard that prayer. Tell them that they are doing what they've been taught. And God's telling you now he's going to do something in your life. Get ready. All the news wants to report is all the negative, the negative, the negative, the negative. If you want to know what God's doing, get in the word, the word, the word, the word. Hallelujah. But now here's the one thing. That First Chronicles chapter 4, it says in verse, uh, verse 9, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bear him with sorrow. How would you like to be called, hey, sorrow, all your life? Well, you know what? Maybe you weren't called sorrow, but maybe you were called sorry. Maybe you were called no good. Maybe inside of you was built that you'll never amount to anything, that you'll be poor all your life. Or maybe what you heard is God anoints apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, and pastors, and you know you're not called to the fivefold. So maybe you think you can't be used of God. I'm here to tell you it's not just a pulpit thing. It's a child of God thing. I'm here to tell you, call your name anointed of God, called of God. Begin to see the anointing in you, flowing out of you. You are needed in the kingdom of God, but you're needed as a fighter. You're not to be a spectator only. You ought to be a fighter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not the day to be wimpy. It's the day to be a fighter. You got the armor of God for a reason. You got the sword of the Spirit. Come on. You've got all you need to be a mighty warrior of God and tear down strongholds of the enemy. It's time we take territory. It's time the news begin to report about the miracle of what's happening in our lives. Hallelujah. Well, we didn't settle for it. And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. And enlarge my coast. How many want enlargement? I want an enlargement of the anointing. 
And that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. If you request, if you ask God for Joel to be evident in your life, for that word to come to pass in your life, God will grant you your prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are different kinds of anointings. There are different measures of anointing. I like Elijah and Elisha. He asked for a double portion, and he gave him a double portion. I don't want just a double portion. Are you out there? Say, so, well, that's a good beginning. It's a good beginning. But there's a special anointing, listen to me, for a specific task within the kingdom of God. And many times what we think about we don't understand there's an anointing to fight. There's an anointing to take territory. We only think of the anointing to lay hands on the sick. Thank God for that. We only think about an anointing for finances. But I'm here to tell you there is an anointing uh, for a specific task for you to fight and defeat the enemy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for the anointing for the sick to be healed. Thank God for the anointing. Come on now, for your borders to be increased. Thank God for all that. But thank God there's some that says, I want to take territory. Thank God there's some I want to tear the kingdom of Satan down. I want to be used of God for specific tasks in specific places, and I need an increase in the anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 6. The Lord our God, Moses said this, spake in this in Horeb, saying, You have dwelt long enough in this mount. We've dwelt long enough with the anointing we have. We're ready for more. Turn you and take your journey and go to the Mount of Amorites and into all the places nigh unto. It begins to name the places. Verse 8. I'm, I'm shorting it because of time. Because I've set the land before you. Go in and possess it which the Lord swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them and to their seed after them. And I spake unto you at that time, saying, I'm not able to bear you alone. The Lord your God multiplied you, and behold, you are this day as the stars of heaven for multitude. The Lord God of our fathers make you a thousand times as many more as you are, and bless you as he's promised. Well, I figured if, if he prayed that prayer for God to bless them a thousand times, are you listening to me? I said, well, now, Lord, that's good enough for me. Yeah. Now, I don't believe it's a thousand times. Are you the anointing? Are you following me? But I'm using that phrase just to let you know, wherever you are with God, there can be an increase in the anointing. You never settle for where you are. You never settle for the power of God in you because we're going to be put in situations. God is going to take you and put you in situations. Are you listening to me? That there is going to tear down the kingdom of Satan in different areas, in different cities. Let's start with our city. Let's start with your workplace. Let's start with your family. Let's take territory and decree every member of our family to serve God. Let's decree. Come on now. Let's say an increase in the anointing. If you said a thousand times more, are you listening to me? And I know it can be my measure to say, Lord, I want, I want more because I want to take territory. It's time for believers to come out of the prayer closet not live in the prayer closet. Now, you know I'm a staunch believer in prayer. I believe that you ought to pray more than you do anything else. But I'm telling you, if all you do is pray, you're missing it. You pray to get an anointing to come out of that prayer closet and take territory. I said this when I first began learning things. I went to a restaurant with my husband and there, you know, we were just, there was only a customer up front. Later, a customer came to the back. It was just one of those lazy Saturdays. We were just enjoying just sitting there. And the next thing we know, the waitress said, you know, she said, go ahead and give me that chicken. I don't care if it's done or not because I'm about to have a fight with a customer in there. And I remember looking and I said, I think it's me. And he said, well, you didn't say anything. I said, I don't think I need to do. 
I said, she hadn't said anything to them and then to us, and she's looking my way. He said, oh, it couldn't be. You know, we're fine. You know what I'm saying? And then the next thing, she looked and looked at me. She said, why don't you just get up and get out of here? And I said, oh, yes, it is. I said, the spirit on her and the spirit on me is not the same spirit. I said, I'm in her place, her restaurant. It's a, a town of Met or a little small town. I said, I think it's better if we just get up. And I said, now look, either I'm going to crawl under the table or crawl over the table. But I can figure out there's about to be a rumble here. Are you listening to me? Now it's a different day. Are you listening to me? It's a different day. Now I'd say, shut up in the name of Jesus. Not where she could hear, but where the Spirit could. So I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, it's a new day. I'm taking territory. It's a new day. It's a new day. It's time for unbelievers to meet face to face with the power of the living God. That doesn't mean you go in their territory. What I'm trying to tell you, when you're met with something, realize you belong to Almighty God. I tell the story of somebody came here and they needed deliverance. And so I sat up and I said to them, not realizing that it was satellite everywhere, and I said, you bow to the God that lives in me. And they bowed and got delivered. I'm telling you, the same God that lives in me is the same God that lives in you. You need to learn to tell in your family, not to their face, are you listening to me, but to the demon that is controlling them, you bow to the God that lives inside of me. You tell him you brought forth those children. Are you telling me, or he brought you into that family? God says, one solitary member in a family, because if he can get one member of the family, he can get them all. <laughs> Hallelujah. I like Elijah. I like Elisha, I like all them. I like reading in Matthew 14 where Jesus fed 5,000 with just some loaves and fishes. But I tell you, when I go to Hebrews chapter 11, I love Hebrews chapter 11. I've always loved it because I see where God is giving credit to people. By faith, this is what this one did. And by faith, that's what that one did. I mean, and it was translated that he wouldn't see death. By faith, Noah. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Sarah. I didn't want that promise. But I begin to say, look on down. <laughs> we do, we ladies. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Isaac. By faith, Jacob. By faith, Joseph. By faith, Moses. And all this going down, down, going down, by faith they forsook Egypt. And all this, came, by faith, they passed through the Red Sea. By faith, the walls of Jericho. By faith, the harlot Rahab. But then verse 2, it says, this is my verse. Say, that's my verse. Because I wasn't used by God for all of that. But in this day and age, this is how he's going to use you. Are you ready? Are you ready? Some of you are. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and Jephthah, of David and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight. Say that. Wax valiant in fight. Turn to flight the armies of the aliens. Are you listening to me? When I read that, I said, that's me. That's me. I want you to realize you will be written in God's book of books as someone who did something by their faith, and they fought. Hallelujah. I might not be putting a lion's den. Are you listening to me? I might not build an ark. Are you following me? I might not do all those other things that the heroes of faith did, but I can fight. I can tear the kingdom down of Satan. There used to be a song, Satan, we're going to tear your kingdom down. I don't even know who wrote it, but I remember years ago, I used to play that at the beginning of every day. And I loved it because it's Satan, we're going to tear your kingdom down. I want you to say that, Satan. We're going to tear your kingdom down. 
You're smart enough to know it's by the power of God. I want you to begin to realize, don't back up. You're a child of the living God, and the world needs to see the power of God. And many times they're going to see it outside the church before you can bring them in the church. Hallelujah. Judges chapter 15. 3,000 men of Judah came to bind Samson to deliver him to the Philistines. He said, well, I will let you bind me, but I don't want it. I don't. But I don't want you to follow me. I don't want you to kill me. He didn't want his friends. Didn't want his family. Didn't want the children of Israel to. And they say, no, we won't, in verse 13. But we'll bind you fast and we'll deliver you into their hands. But we're not going to kill you. And so they bound him with two cords and brought him up from the rock. Verse 14. And when they came into Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. Say that. The Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the cords that were upon his arm became as flax that was burnt with fire, and his bands were loose from off his hands. Listen to me. God's going to deliver your family. God's going to deliver them. This I love. And he found, the, he found a new jawbone of an ass that just happened to be there. Are you listening to me? The most unlikely weapon. God is going to use something that you never would have even taken a second look at. It looked like he's there without any hope, without any help. But when God's on your side, he can use the most unlikely thing to be a weapon to be used against the enemy. Are you listening to me? But I'm here to tell you when you serve God, understand when things look bad, God is on the move. Hallelujah. God is on the move. He's looking for fighters. Are you out there? Listen. Uh, and when they came, the Philistines shouted against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And the cords that were upon his arms became his flax that was burnt with fire, and his bands were loose from off his hands. And he found a new jawbone of an ass and put forth his hand, took it, and slew a thousand men thereof. And Samson said, with the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jaw of an ass have I slain a thousand men. I call that a thousand times anointing. I'm here to tell you, don't look at the size of the enemy. Don't look at what you think is the power of the enemy. I'm here to tell you the spirit of the God is greater, more powerful than any power of the enemy. And it's good to see you, Cindy. Now, Second Samuel chapter 23. These be the names of the mighty men whom, were, whom David had. The uh, Tekamite that sat in the seat, chief among the captains. The same was Adino the Esnite. Listen what he did. He lifted up his spear against 800 whom he slew at one time. Now, you're going to find that these men were David's men. Why? Because, see, they understood. They saw David fight. They got being around a fighter before you know it, that spirit of that anointing will be on you. If that's the truth, and if you're wimpy, I don't want to be around you unless you're open for help. Are you listening to me? Then I'll tell you that you got to change and become a fighter. Ever who you hang around with, that's who you're going to be like. I'm a fighter. I'm a fighter. I don't like the way the enemy binds people. I don't like how he steals from them, robs them, and kills them. It makes me mad when I see the enemy's got anybody in bondage. There doesn't have to be bondage for them. You are the answer for their bondage. That is the power of the living God inside of you. Hallelujah. Become a fighter. When you wake up in the morning, say, devil, I just woke up. Listen, 800 against one, but it was one with the Spirit of God. And after him was Eliezer, the son of Dodo. I wouldn't want to name Dodo. I'm probably not pronouncing it right, but D-O-D-O -D -O is Dodo in English. <laughs> the whole type, one of the three mighty men with David whom they defied the Philistines that were gathered together to battle, and the men of Israel were gone away. 
He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary and his hand clave into the sword and the Lord wrought a great victory that day. And then the people came back. All they had was him in the spoil. He was in so, so fight mode that he grabbed a hold of that spear and even when the battle was over, he still had it in his hand and they had to help open his hand and take it out. He was bent it's like this, just raise your hand. Just raise your hand in the fighting mode the whole time. Are you listening to me? I'm here to tell you that God's going to anoint you and there will be revival where you work, revival in your neighborhood, revival in your family. You don't fight in the natural, but you're going to fight in the spirit, but the anointing will be on you for you to win. God's going to enlarge the kingdom of God. We're not going down. We're going to go out. Come on. It's going to be an enlargement for you individually, for us collectively as a church, for come on, this city, for the nation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They say we're going down. They forget I don't fit in a tube. We don't go into hiding. We get great strength. And after him was Shema, the son of that man of that place. And the Philistines were gathered together in a troop where there was a piece of ground full of lentils. And the people fled from the Philistines. But he stood in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines. And the Lord had wrought a great miracle. Are, are you listening to me? I know my time. I'm watching my time. But see, the, the children of Israel would work hard. And this about the time that harvest came up. Here came the Philistines and would take all their harvest. Time after time after time. And everybody flew. But there was one man that said, I've left this pea patch my last time. The devil has stolen my harvest the last time. The devil stolen a day out of the life of my child the last time. Are you listening to me? The devil has stolen too many people that I love and I care about. But one thing I know, whether I know them or don't know them, the Father loves them and he cares about them. It's time we have a focus and say, he's taken too many with him, the devil has. It's time for us to stand up and say, we've left that sinner our last time. Are you listening to me? It's time we begin to realize we're called in the last days. The anointing is for strength, the authority. It's time for us to make known Jesus Christ. Gideon had 3,002, wasn't it? 3,200 men, 32,000 men. And God said, Gideon, that's too many. He made him get it all the way down to 300 plus him because he wanted them to know you're not doing it by your might. You're doing it by my power. I'm here to tell you that in this great revival, it will not be how smart we are. It will not be our programs. It won't be the flashing lights. Are you listening to me? And it surely will not be the churches trying to act like the world. I'm just saying it like it is. When you got to do a show and a kick in the legs and dancing around to get the world, you're not getting the world. You're getting the world in you. That'll never win them. That'll never deliver them. That'll never change their life. But when you have the power of God, are you listening to me? You might not even hit the right key, but I'm telling you, when you have the power of God, that power of God will not only attract them, but it'll save them, heal them, and deliver them. It'll change them. The Bible said it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. I went to a church, and it's a good church, but I went to a church as a visitor, and they did the announcement of the angels coming and no room at the end, and it was all negative, and it was just, it was nothing. Are you listening to them? They said they wanted to make it hip and relevant, and I thought, excuse me, it don't need to be hip. I mean, it was all negative. It wasn't anything to do, didn't agree with the word at all, just what could have happened, and I said, I don't care what could have happened. I want to know what did happen. I want to know how the angels said, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Are you out there? I want to know that it was the shepherds and the sheep. I want them to know that those sheep was there that were for the slaughter the next day. Don't dumb it down. Come on now. Get their power and the anointing and bring it up where it is. I'm here to tell you that God's going to do a demonstration of who he is. 
I love when I see about different people describe Psalms 91. I love the way Moses described God. All the things that he is. He is our high tower. God, but listen to me. I love Revelations chapter 1, verse 12. When I turned to see who was speaking to me, I saw seven gold lampstands. And standing in the middle of the lampstands was someone like the Son of Man. He was wearing a long robe with a gold sash across his chest. His head and his hair was white as wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were like flames of fire. His feet were like polished bronze refined in a furnace, and his voice thundered like mighty ocean waves. He held seven stars in his right hand, and a sharp two-edged sword came from his mouth, and his face was like the sun of all its brilliance. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as if I were dead. But he laid his right hand on me and said, Don't be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I died, but look, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Are you listening to me? I like that description. I know who he is in Psalms 91. I thank it. I thank Moses how he described all that he was. He is that. He's my strong tower. He's my buckler. Are you listening? He is all those kind of things. But I want you to know it's time for them to have a revelation that he is alive forevermore. He's alive forevermore. He's alive forevermore. I want them to understand Jesus is alive and has the keys of death, hell, and the grave. He's alive forevermore. Can you imagine the brilliance of seeing Jesus? I'm here to tell you, don't get all down on what's happening in the world. Pray against it, but start taking authority. But start decreeing what God is doing. I'm here to tell you, God is doing something. I don't know how many, you know, do you have more of a description of what was going on with Chris than what I do? All I know, liver failure. I'm here to tell you, I mean, you're swollen, are you listening to me? Yellow as he could be. His eyes, I mean, just, I mean, he looked terrible. Very swollen and everything. But you know what? God was on the move. God was on the move. I'm here to tell you, I don't care how things look. I don't care what things are being said. Don't let it get you down and do woe is me. Read it if you need to, a little bit of it to be, the Bible said we need understanding of the times, but when it's negative, say, I curse you. I curse you. You're not going to do that in our city. I'm living here. So I have a responsibility. You're here on this earth because you're to be written in the book. The Bible said there's going to be a book of books to be opened up. There's a Lamb's book of life, but in heaven there's another book called the book of books. And I might not do an ark. I might not be in the lion's den. I might not do any of those other things. But I said, Lord, mine is going to be there. This is what she did by fighting the forces of evil, by telling them by the power of the name and power of the blood, you're cursed. By the power of the name and power of the blood, you got to loose them. I'll be in there as a fighter. I won't be in there as a wimpy Christian. I won't be there as somebody that's complacent. I won't be there somebody, whatever will be, will be. I will never be in that kind of a book. Are you listening to me? Amen. I'll be in the book said, well, if you want to fight her, just call her. I want the devil to say, oh, no, she just walked in. I was called one time. Patty Alcott was there and my daughter was there. And a person with very demonic manifestations, if, you, if that bothers you, you can pretend they're all in Africa. That they can't go across the water. But the truth of it is, they're here. Isn't that amazing? People think they're only like in Haiti and witchcraft places. You know, where the, oh, come on, they're here. But it's all right, so is Jesus. So they called me to show up to a place. I pulled up and nobody could see me. They didn't know. But the minute I pulled up, that demon-possessed person began to say, date this here. Date this here. That's how Patty and them knew I was there. Date this here. First thing I did, he said, I'm going to do battle with you. I said, oh, no, you're not. You're not going to do battle with me. You're coming against the name of Jesus and the power of the blood. And the name and the blood of the Lamb will defeat you, and you'll have to let go of that girl and come out of her. Are you listening to me? I want you to know that same power. I'm no special. 
I only know the name. And I know the power of the blood. That's all. Are you listening to me? Anything that God used me for, God can use you for. It's just knowing who you are in Christ, knowing your authority as a believer, knowing the power of the name and the power of the blood of the Lamb. And if you meet him, tell him, you bow to the God that lives in me. And have your name recorded in the book of books as you were a fighter. Amen. Amen.